In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Well, today is our annual parish meeting, uh, the sort of all-family meeting intended to fulfill the temple requirements of our corporate life. At the same time, contrasted and designed to make clear the reason for our physical existence within a larger spiritual context and purpose. It is a temptation uh, as we seek to glorify God to attempt to have a perfectly ordered church as opposed to just a well-ordered church. I can't tell you how much time I spent this week checking and double-checking budget numbers to avoid having our annual parish meeting thrown into total chaos by some rocket scientist sitting on the front row who finds a three-cent error in the budget calculation, whose name is James Ratliff. (laughs) Although having our temporal affairs in order is vitally important, The whole purpose of the temporal work of the church is to support the mission of the church, to make possible our devotion to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, the breaking of bread and the prayers. And it is the mission of the church with which we must primarily concern ourselves. In church growth parlance, uh, this polarity is often referred to as between maintenance and mission. Years ago at a diocesan clergy conference, the then master of church growth, Lyle Shiler, asked this question of all the clergy of the diocese. How many of you, when you wake up in the morning, is it 1952? I was the only one to raise my hand. (laughs) To the great laughter of the other clergy. So Lyle Shiler, who was really a fun speaker, responded, let me describe your church to you without having seen it. Most of your very few members in church on Sunday morning have white hair. Your Sunday school has about a dozen children in it, mostly the clergy and staff's children. The largest portion of your annual budget is for building maintenance, and you live in dread fear of the altar guild. Am I right, he asked. I responded, well, actually... We are the 13th best attended Episcopal Church in America. Our older members focus in on bringing in younger members. We have 250 children in our Sunday school. Our building expenses for expansion of facilities to fit our growth. Our outreach, both socially and missionary, accounts for one-third of our annual expenditures. But yes, I do live in dread fear of the altar table. <laughs> In essence of substance, the same can be said of St. George's. But these are very different times. Next December, I will have been ordained for 40 years. One of the most interesting things about these years in the church is all the various stages, the ups and downs and the changes that have been the context for the church missionaries work, missionary work. How 10 years ago we approached children reluctant parents, teenagers, young adults, is simply no longer an approach that even makes sense. Even though we need to always meet people in their own reality, the mission imperative or underlying character of the church has not, nor should it ever uh, change its life-giving content. And although we are about to undergo dramatic changes this Friday, The forces against the church will not easily be vanquished. The ideology of radical secular liberalism that now faces us is firmly established in our culture and government by Barack Obama, making official policy decidedly anti-Christian. In a report released this week (coughs) by the Pew Foundation, (coughs) still, still Keith, still coughing, but much better, thank you. (laughs) Uh, So the Pew Foundation released a report entitled 
uh, how America changed during Barack Obama's presidency. It makes the point that the Obama administration re uh, viewed religion as an enemy standing in the way of their policy objectives. The report attacks religious liberty as a guide for guise for discrimination, that religious liberty is a justification for bigotry, bigotry, prejudice, and discrimination, that religious liberty and religious freedom are code words for intolerance, racism, sexism, homophobia, and Islamophobia, that religion is being used as a weapon and a shield by those seeking to deny others equality. The report also warns that despite constitutional protections to the contrary, the courts are heavily influenced by these arguments, tending to side with anti-discrimination laws over constitutionally guaranteed religious liberty, viewing religious liberty as an infringement upon civil rights. In Barack Obama's at last, at long last, farewell address, he said, for too many, it's become safer to retreat into our bubbles, including places of worship, accepting only information, whether it's true or not, that fits our opinions, instead of basing our opinions on the evidence of science and reason, which comes as a big surprise to us to base our opinion on revelation in Scripture. So even though Bill O'Reilly has declared the war on Christmas, on Christmas one, now that we are free to say Merry Christmas in public places, I can assure you that the fight is far more than just that. And our own parish missional approach and goals and those we model for the larger church must be clearly articulated, offering a viable and attractive alternative to the secular socialist agenda of despair, to the escapist culture of sex and drugs so firmly rooted in 21st century America. An important point of my discussion with both of our bishops this fall is our concern that the church in recent times has foregone its foundational moorings, has forgotten its own story, has forsaken its formational traditions, that let us know who we are and what God expects of us. This morning's annual parish meeting marks the official beginning to a purposeful re-articulation and reassertion of Christian discipline, mission, and obedience at St. George's to undergird our ministry and mission as well as to create faithful models within the larger church, which in many places resembles the culture more than the church. Our meetings, uh, our meeting uh, starting point this morning, uh, as it always should be, will be prayer using a bidding prayer uh, from our prayer book. And you know, bidding prayers are a little bit longer. They sort of follow uh, an outline of the prayer for the whole state of Christ Church. But in the opening paragraph of the bidding prayer we are going to use, the church is defined as the blessed company of all faithful people. God's missional tools to fulfill his purposes are articulated and include these. Purity of faith, holiness of life, perfectness of love, visible unity. That in all things, the prayer says, the church may work according to God's will, serving him faithfully, worshiping him, acceptably and then the prayer concludes that this life ended we may be partakers of the glorious resurrection and everlasting life well given that the annual parish meeting sermon offers a flexibility uh, that we don't usually have in our classical Sunday sermons I want to give you a snapshot into what this all means it is clear that the Anglican Church in America is in chaos. The whole church in America is in chaos. The Episcopal Church uh, has become a Unitarian meeting house, indistinguishable from the sex-focused culture, looking at congregations like monkeys in a zoo. Those who left the Episcopal Church when we did are so heavily influenced by entertainment models 
and lack properly formed and educated priests and bishops, that they have become themselves anything but truly Anglican. For example, at Beeson Divinity School, they offer a certificate in Anglican Studies, certificate in Anglican Studies, which they say prepares a student for a life and ministry in the Anglican Church with four three-credit-hour courses. Anglican History and Doctrine, one course, all one course. Sacramental Theology, all one course. Pastoral Formation, one course. Very different than pastoral formation and knowing that the missionary work of the church involves pastors uh, doing pastoral work, saying morning and evening prayer and communion on a daily basis in community. And then finally, parish administration, whatever that might be. It's a total of 12 credit hours instead of the traditional 90 credit hours. Would you go to a doctor with only one semester of med school? Would you? To counter this crisis within church culture, uh, in, within a church culture of easy ordination, untrained leadership, religious identity chaos, we ourselves are in, in, embarking on a purposeful time of theological self-examination and organizational refocus on mission to establish benchmarks and models for historically effective and life-changing mission, drawing on our spiritually rich resources to reintroduce the church to untainted, well-practiced Anglicanism, meaning firstly the evangelism of witnessing worship in serving faithfully and worshiping acceptably. Um, what the, our hymn this morning as we were singing it says and so through all the length of days thy goodness fill us never good shepherd may I sing may I sing thy praise within thy house forever that's worship that's worship that's our best evangelism tool it's what changes our hearts and reshapes our lives um, that's Anglicanism the missional solemnity of worship wherein we do the praying and God does the converting. It is apparent that God has blessed our congregation for a purpose, starting uh, gathering us in this particular building, located in the midst of a very ver diverse downtown, with a team of actually particularly gifted thinkers who have a commitment to the uncompromised gospel and importantly, a passion for the conversion of souls. Our task to develop a more vigorous and purposeful mission focus to be, bold, to be boldly Anglican in a modern world hostile to faith is first and primary on the table. To be about this work, I have actually restructured the vestry, not only to be about its important work of maintenance, but with new assignments and responsibilities to engage Christ's missionary imperative. So today, at our annual parish meeting, we begin a three-year project of strategically looking at how in this age to be the church in the world, but not of it. Uh, Senior Warden Michael Porter, who is sitting right there and two seats behind him, Junior Warden John Stone Street, and I have committed our leadership work to focus on the development of parish life in which all of us may join in being God's church in God's world for God's purposes. This is the central work now before us. It is actually daunting, at the same time exciting, earth-shaking while being enemy-challenged. God alone finally able to defeat the global uh, secular elites but for us right now could there be any better way to spend our lives and our resources to the glory of God may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore